I'm Mike Costello, and I'm here with Dr. Iris Freelander, and we'd like to talk to you today about reaching inward. As we live our lives, we live in the external seemingly, but uh, what goes on inside us, inside our minds, uh, inside our thoughts, really determines the quality of our life, doesn't it, Iris? Yes, indeed it does. And we might think it's not important, but it's the most important thing we can ever do is to look within. And years ago, I used to think I was supposed to write a book called Look Within, mm -hmm. and I kept thinking, I, that kept coming to me over and over, at various aspects of Look Within. And then I realized it was just someone on the inner planes of being reminding me to look within. And um, I, probably with my guardian angel, but it was a very good thing because we need to look within and perhaps some of us need to be reminded more fully than others. And so I had to be really be like hit over the head with this idea. But uh, when we do take time to look within, then we're living more fully in present time. And when we keep our consciousness in present time, we're doing the very best we can with our lives, aren't we? We are. And so often in New Thought, we talk about living in the now. And so much of our thought and so much of our inner being, our inner life, inner, inner life, uh, is spent in the past or in the future. Uh, and in the past and in the future, we judge. And in the past and in the future, we create fears. And in the past and in the future, we lay the groundwork for all kinds of things that may or may not happen. Happen, and we have all kinds of things that, from the past that we don't uh, want to let go of, uh, uh, sometimes negative <laughs> feelings and hurt feelings. But uh, if we live in the now, then we find ourselves in the present moment, in the present circumstance, in the present situation. So often in my lectures, I spend time, as, as you know well, uh, talking to people about the importance of being in the present moment and understanding that in the present moment, in the now, uh, as we say in metaphysics and new thought, in the now is really where we need to be. We have brought ourselves and we have caused ourselves and divinity and life and all of the magnificence of being has brought us to this present moment. And uh, this is the experience that we need. And so often the experiences that we need are not the experiences that we want, <laughs> but they're the experiences that we need. And so as we are in the now, and also in the now means to be physically present with the people around us, mm. to appreciate and see them as persons, and to appreciate them as persons. Uh, a lot of times on the program we talk about children, we talk about uh, adults as well, but uh, parents very often fail to see their children. And children are very uh, responsive to this reality, and yet they are so responsive also to parents uh, and loved ones who are present with them. And the same is true at the end of life. Uh, you and I do a lot of end of life counseling and, and work with people at the end of, of this life experience, and, and people want uh, so much to be present with someone. And then in relationships, people want to be present. And if if we're not in relationships, or even if, if our home life is a singular or a solitary one, we want to be recognized and seen uh, in the moment of where we are when we're conversing with people and when we're, uh, we're talking with people is very important. Yes, it's so very important. And we can see if we look at our own lives or the lives of those people close to us that uh, when we keep, when we are reaching inward, when we're looking within, then we are more loving toward others. We're more accepting of others. And uh, we're also more helpful toward others because if we truly reach within, then we're seeing life on a grand scale as opposed to just minutely here and there. And when we do see life on a larger level, larger scale, then we're less apt to be uh, exercising any negativities in our lives because we're just seeing more fully 
what we would consider to be God's will on earth, and God gave mankind free will. So we have the, the opportunity to exercise our free will, and as we do that, if, when we reach inward, then we are living more fully um, spiritually. And when the more highly spiritually we live our lives, regardless of our religion, that wouldn't matter. The more spiritually oriented we are in our lives, the more apt we are to look inward, aren't we? Absolutely. And uh, we need to understand that we are spiritual beings, we're mental beings, and we're physical beings. But we're not physical beings that every Sunday or periodically <laughs> have a spiritual experience. Uh, we are, we are pr principally mental and spiritual beings. We're spiritual beings at the core of who and what we are, and at the conscious level, we're mental beings. And then the physical is just uh, the vehicle that moves <laughs> us around. And uh, we, we need to remind ourselves of that. And as we look within, we're able to see our own value and our own self-worth and, of course, the issues of self-esteem and, uh, and, and knowing that we are important. Every one of us is important and valued, not only as a divine being and as a mental being, but as a person uh, is so, so very, very important. And so often uh, we talk to people who are so totally and abjectly isolated and so alone, or so lonely, I should say and not alone, because many people are alone and they're very happy and content. But uh, that issue of looking within and being willing to go within, and uh, part of that is, is how comfortable we are with ourselves. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing when we talk to people and counsel with people how uh, seldom we look within. And then when we do begin to look within and use certain techniques and abilities to uh, share with people their own abilities to look within themselves, to examine their behaviors and their thoughts and their feelings and their emotions and, and, their, and their spiritual values, their, their, their external values as well, we, we begin to see the fact that, that a lot of people are not very comfortable with themselves at all. And that's unfortunate. And, and being alone really is one of the greatest tests of seeing whether how comfortable we are with ourselves, <laughs> isn't it, Iris? Yes, it is. But uh, many of us are too apt to want to be alone more than we should be mm -hmm. because we just like the complacency of day-to-day of -day living. And it's a relief sometimes to um, be able just to be. And when we have been so busy in the world and busy w with our work, and I know that you must feel that way too, and I know that I do, that it's a it's a it's a joy just to have a, a certain amount of time when we can do exactly as we please whether that's taking a cup of coffee out on the patio and reading or just meditating or uh, something very simple then um, that's the time when we're more apt to be able to look within so we owe it to ourselves to have blocks of time so that and to allow the people around us to have their privacy and their time so that we each have this opportunity to look within because uh, we have to have time to do that, but also we have to give others that same opportunity. Mm -hmm. And as we look within, we need to examine what it is makes us happy. Yes. And just as you were talking, I was or speaking, I was remind, just thinking about how often when we talk to people, uh, one of the questions that I ask is, "What do you enjoy?" And people have to stop and think for a few <laughs> minutes, and then after they kind of figure out what it is they enjoy, then my next question. And always says, well, when was the last time you did it? Well, then they have to kind of stop and think about that. <laughs> well, that, you know, that, uh, all of that contributes to the stress of life, and that has external uh, ramifications, mm -hmm. external being in the physical. We know that it, it stresses our bodies, it raises our blood pressure, it causes dis, -dis mm -hmm. and illness, it wears us out, but it also uh, keeps us from being the serene and, and happy and joyful and peaceful beings that we were created to be from the foundation of, of life. Yes, and we have to realize that there are people on earth who don't have an opportunity for silence and they don't have an opportunity 
to just be peacefully quiet. But um, everyone is living their own karma, and I don't mean that in a negative way. We each have a destiny to fulfill, and as we fulfill that destiny, then we go through a lot of trials and tribulations. We go through a lot that we think in retrospect, we don't know how we managed to, to live that, live through that. But um, if we look back in history, we see that the times haven't changed. There's always been times of turbulence and time of peace and quiet and times of turbulence. It's a cycle. And so we're going through that cycle now. And um, so if there are those people in, who listen to our program um, who think, well, they must have an easy life a bit and they don't have problems in their lives, uh, everyone has problems in their lives. I'm thinking of a lady who came to me for counseling, and uh, people ask, have asked me at various times, what do you and Mike do when you counsel people? And I say, well, we show them their options. Mm -hmm. And so as we show them their options, then they make their own decisions. We don't do it for them. But this one lady was very successful in her business, extremely successful. Uh, financially and uh, self-satisfaction and so forth but she knew she needed to change because it was her health was being affected and there's too many uh, obstacles in her way so she made great changes in her life and fortunately she didn't get a divorce and she and her husband were very strong in their marriage but she changed ever so many things in her personal relationships uh, she um, retired from her business and just stayed home. And that took a lot of courage to do that. So when, when we look at our lives and see what it is we don't like about our lives, then we have to be totally objective. And as we look within, as we look inward and see what it is that really makes us happy, as you mentioned earlier, what it is we really want to do in life, we might have, we might need to get the garner the courage to make great changes in our lives. Sometimes that's necessary. So I would say to those who are listening, uh, look at your own life, see what you want different in your life, and then make those changes. And don't say, well, she can sit there and say that. Um, everyone can make the changes they want to if they really wish to. And very often it, it comes into everyone's life that we have to make rough changes. Yeah, and absolutely. And uh, I know both you and I have had rough <laughs> times and difficult times. And people see us as so serene, but in fact, in the difficulties that we've had, we've become stronger. We've mm -hmm. come through those, and many of those we've, we've come through knowing each other and at other points before we knew each other. And life is always a combination of challenging experiences, and that's the way it's always going to be. And so some of us do appear to be more serene and more collected and and uh, more able to cope. But I think that really has to do with the, the individuals who understand the principles mm -hmm. that we teach and that we share, which are universal. They don't have to do with any particular church or, or any uh, school of psychology or, or thought. They are universal principles that can be applied applied to everyone and everyone's life. And the one thing that we do stress is that no matter what we do, that challenge is going to come to all of us. And that as we are able to look at those challenges and deal with those challenges, uh, positive and wonderful things can happen. Yes. And when we review our own lives, we have to not say yes, but, and we have to not say it can't be done because anything that we want to have happen can be done. It might not be done as fully as we would like, but it can be done. So we have to not stand guard too strongly at our own door and keep everything out, but just have the door wide open and let everything come in uh, so that we have options and we we review those options and make decisions and then live with them. And anything can be changed later on. It can't it's, it's nothing is again nothing is set in stone that we it's going to be forever so and if it is forever then that's what we needed 
Probably. Anyway, because we're strongly undergirded, each person is strongly undergirded by their own guardian angel, by those on the inner planes of being, by God's own love and light. We just have to open ourselves to that and look for that. And we need to work at keeping that door open always, <laughs> don't we? We'd like to pause at this point in the program and offer you the opportunity to receive some literature so that you can continue to study the ideas and concepts that we're sharing with you. to offer you the opportunity to receive one of these free booklets to further your understanding of the new thought message of confident living. Each month we will feature a different booklet which will be mailed to you free and postage paid. Simply address your request to Confident Living at P.O. Box 7726, Long Beach, California, 90807. Before the break, you touched on a very important point, and I think that uh, in the second half of the program, we need to spend some time talking about that, and that's personal responsibility. <laughs> we do have personal responsibility, don't we, Iris? Yes. We have choice, we have personal responsibility, we have free will, we have all of those things. And as we look within, it is always up to us to make the decisions that are right for us and to be willing to change or if we choose not to change to accept the consequences of that decision as well. But life is about and the spiritual principles and the psychological principles that we teach and believe in are girded, uh, undergirded and founded in the very core belief of personal responsibility because we are divine beings and we can connect at any time we are connected at all times with the presence and the power of the divine. But we have to make the choice and it is a personal choice that we make over and over again uh, in a myriad of ways. But that personal responsibility, it comes back to making those decisions. Some of them are hard and some of them are painful and some of them are difficult, but we have to take responsibility. And that doesn't take away from God or the divine or our faith or anything else. It actually strengthens it, doesn't it? Yes, it is. And we are co-creators with Creator God. And if we can remember that we are, then what are we creating on earth? And are we creating peace and harmony? Are we creating uh, love and light? Are we creating uh, a better environment for the people around us? And I mean mentally, spiritually, physically, and in every way. Are we doing that? And are we not looking at the past and thinking, woe is me, but looking at the past and make some sense of it in our own heads and then and get on with our lives. And we all, again, we all have adversity in our lives. We've all had disappointments. We've all had betrayals. We've all had all of those. And some have had more than others. And some seem to have had more than their share. And our hearts break for those persons who are in war-torn countries, whose, whose homes burn, burn to the ground, who have a severe uh, physical handicaps. But we know that all is well in all the lives. And, uh, and everything happens for a reason. And we don't know those reasons. If we did, we'd, well, I wouldn't be presumed to know those reasons. Because uh, we can just accept that what is, is, and that we need to just continue with our lives to the very best of our ability and assume that self-responsibility. Assume it in a way that is helpful to others, that's, that gets, makes our own lives progress instead of stand still or regress. Mm -hmm. And very often uh, we do all that we think we can and yet circumstances continue to go in the way that they're going. And sometimes that personal responsibility means simply accepting responsibility for this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And very often in our work we'll say to people, this is the way it is. This is where you are. This is the experience. I, you know, I don't know why. Perhaps we can help you understand why. Perhaps you'll come to know why. Perhaps you'll never know why. But 
the reality is that the way that we each one of us feel about circumstances, the way we respond to circumstances, is sometimes the issue of, of the amount of control or the amount of uh, personal responsibility that we take. And we always have responsibility for how we react and respond to circumstances and situations. And sometimes we just have to let things be. And so often uh, when we talk to people, especially in family situations, uh, in relationships with children, uh, with illness, in a variety of different negative aspects of, of, uh, of being. Uh, the question is why, why, why? And, the, and reaching in doesn't mean always getting the answer. Reaching in means reaching in and continuing to go within and continuing to look at the problem, continuing to experience the problem, continuing to be in the present moment and be willing to not allow that to have control over our being or over our life. And I'm thinking now about people that we've talked to and worked with uh, with terminal illnesses who are in horrible protracted pain. And we know that as we work with those people uh, on a variety of levels, with meditation, with guided imagery, with introspection, with prayer, with uh, counseling, with uh, solitude, with all kinds of things, that as as people become uh, resigned in a way, mm -hmm. and resigned doesn't mean giving up, it means giving in. And as we give in, we don't necessarily give up. We just accept the fact that this is where I am, and now I'm willing to be here, and I'm willing to be guided, and I'm willing to be directed, and I'm willing to allow circumstance and situation to be as it is, and I'm willing to make changes in my life, but I'm not going to be defeated by it. I'm not going to be overly depressed by it. And that's not to say that we won't be depressed because depression is a normal process, but we will continue to allow ourselves to take personal responsibility over our own emotions and our own thoughts and our own feelings. And it's really important not to repress those feelings and say, I don't feel this way. <laughs> we feel the way we feel. And if we feel hurt, if we feel dejected, if we feel depressed, then that's good. That's where we, that's not good. That's where we are. And then from there, we can begin to determine how it is we're going to feel about this. And often we need to talk to someone about that. And sometimes we need to talk to ourselves about it. Sometimes we need to talk to God about it. Sometimes we need to just be quiet in it. And if we do, then wonderful things will be revealed. But we really need to be in the experience, and we need to understand that the experience is here for a purpose, and that that experience is going to bring us somewhere and is going to bring us something good. And we may not come to know it right away. Uh, and it's hard because sometimes, as you know and I know very well, and our hearts do break for those people who, uh, who live these experiences through their tears and their broken hearts, but it is the reality and it is the truth that if they do not allow these things to defeat or overcome them, then wonderful things will come at, at a point. Exactly. And also, um, as you know, I was a hospice volunteer for 10 years, and you and I have both been with a lot of people who have been very ill and dying. And it's the people who don't resist their pain. Mm -hmm. It's the non-resistance that's um, the important aspect. Because when they don't resist the pain, they don't feel nearly as much pain. And I don't minimize pain and the, and the pain that many people go through. But I've seen it so many times um, that if they can just relax and not resist, then the pain is much, much, much less. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's true in all aspects of life. If we don't resist what's happening, then everything comes much more easily, our work, our parenting, our friendships, whatever we do, comes. it's so much more e easier and it's so much more productive if we're not forcing our way, if we're just non-resistant. And, uh, so, and we can teach others to be that way too. I know one way we teach them is to teach them the art of deep breathing and meditation. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that happen so many times with people who are 
terminally ill, if you just teach them, and sometimes I would just be able to help people in the very last day of their life, but I would just show them how deep breathing is so important, and then they die so very much more peacefully. Mm -hmm. So we can all help others around us through our own way of being serene and quiet, but also help others to be. And, and we both know that the best way is the deep breathing to get started. That's the key, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. That. Uh, and also for angry, mm -hmm. you know, our mothers were right, you know, take a deep breath, count to 10, <laughs> you know, walk around the block. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, emotions are good. And uh, we've, we've decided in many ways that emotions are so bad. And I'm just convinced that one of the greatest emotions we have is, is tears are great. <laughs> you know, they're a great cleanser and they're, they're wonderful. And every one of us has those experiences in life. And that's just a part of the process. That's part of the inward reaching. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when we do reach inward within ourselves, we're reaching to the very highest within us, and that's the holy monad, the spiritual aspect of being. And when we go to that aspect of our own beinghood, then we can't help but be wonderfully better in every way, and things are better in our lives in every way, because that's the key, isn't it, the spiritual aspect of being. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. At our core, we are spiritual beings. We're spiritual beings in a physical experience. We're moving through this process, and we're moving through this process in a wonderful and magnificent way, in a supportive environment, in a, in a welcoming world, in, in just the way that things should be. And that may not be the way we want it to be <laughs> always, and we may not always be able to see it, but there's always true, isn't it? Exactly. And in retrospect, we can see how we, would won we wonder, how do we ever think? Of what we thought when we know that something else, a different thought was so much better and it worked out ever so much better. And this is why we need to not be too didactic, not be too strong in our beliefs and not push too hard. Because if we have to push too hard, then there must be something wrong there. So stand back and look at the situation again. Look within, um, reach inward, see what your inner, inner source tells you. And the inner aspect of your own beinghood is always far more uh, productive and far more reliable. That's what I was trying to think of. It's more reliable, isn't it? Absolutely. And you can always, always, always trust yourself. Be willing to trust yourself. Be willing to let go of the judgment of yourself. Embrace the moment. Reach within and be happy where you are. And as we end this program, we'd like to mention to you that our telephone number has changed. And so the number that you see at the end of the program is not the correct number. And our correct telephone number is area code 5 six two four three five nine one one two and we thank you for watching Mike and Iris would like to extend a cordial invitation for you to join them this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for our weekly celebration service at the beautiful Seaport Marina Hotel at the corner of Pacific Coast Highway and 2nd Street adjacent to the Marina Pacifica and Marketplace Shopping Centers. There will be a guided meditation, prayers, spirited music, and a dynamic, life-changing new thought message. Please join us this Sunday. You will be warmly welcomed into the company of like-minded, positive, and uplifting people. And remember, whatever your dream, whatever your vision, you can attain it through confident living.